Brockley Max Festival is one of the gems of South East London, let alone Brockley. Celebrated its 21st year last year and it is the baby of Moira Tate. And one of the things she was trying to do is to get a, a central platform that celebrates so much of the creative artists that live in Brockley. So, and she's, she's built upon this and she's grown this thing into something that is a really important, iconic centerpiece each year in Brockley. It's organized by the community. Um, they put on events, uh, we support them in putting on those events, uh, we connect people together. It's an amazing, um, amazing festival and the community are really, this year, because of the lack of funding, they crowdfunded the opening night. So it's, uh, yeah, it's much loved by the community. This project came about because one of my um, volunteers two years ago, Nicola, was saying it was lovely that we are very proud in this community that we have so much street art. Um, and we have three, uh, black men that have been painted, but wouldn't it be wonderful to have three black women? So, you know, you sit on these ideas um, and then the email came through from the Mayor of London saying they've got this new strand of funding uh, called Untold Stories, which is about um, showing diverse stories or hidden stories within a community. And they particularly, they even mentioned the word murals. And so I thought, wow, this is perfect for it. So we started uh, putting it to the community to suggest women uh, that, we would, that could be put forward. Um, I think originally we had over 18, some we couldn't actually find much about um, that we could then put up on the website, but we ended up with a long list of 14 amazing black women who have somehow changed either the community or um, society in this country or even internationally. And from that, um, we then did it to another public vote to vote for their favourite. And then along with the steering committee of five other amazing local black women, uh, we chose the final, what we thought would be three, but of course ended up with four because the Elaine sisters were twins. And so we've now got four amazing black women. We work together to discuss things such as the impact of their work, what areas the women worked in. So for example, like social justice, environment, the arts. We wanted to make sure that there was a good representation of all the different areas that make society up into one whole that the women represented. So we wanted to make sure that people from all different backgrounds, especially black women, can have something to relate to. It's about trying to recognise uh, many of the women in this area that have been doing some outstanding work, that have been doing work that helps to make this, this part of London a good place to live in. That's one of the reasons why I chose the Alain Sisters in the dance field, because it's, it's out of that kind of specific community work and that social kind of justice work. It was important to have another representation. I'm Christina Elaine from Elaine Dance. Hi, I'm Sade Elaine from Elaine Dance. And we are both choreographers, we're dance artists, and we're artistic directors of our company that's based in the UK, but it's an international dance company. We strive for excellence in our three main strands, which is performance, participation, and development. Dance was our passion. Um, weren't necessarily our um, elite skill. We were athletes and we used to train in North London actually um, with running and for Enfield and Haringey but it was when we found the passion for dance and that was through just seeing outdoor shows um, and we were like ah oh, we could do that um, made us look to what else we could do and that's made us move from North London to South London and South London was the birth of um, our dancing career, but we didn't know it at the time. To be nominated for the Black Icons project was um, wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, just because it was a beautiful year for us that we got to create on the Lewish and Bar of Culture, and we worked with over 200 people in a mass dance. Uh, that was really touching for us because we, we felt like we managed to bring all of these different people together and celebrate through movement. So it, to get nominated, it really touched us because it was the mm. icing on the, the cake for what we've just achieved already. Yeah, I think it's an honour and I, I just love the idea of a younger Christina and Shadi seeing themselves painted on a wall and can recognise that and be like, I can do that too. I think it's just a wonderful gift. I'm really inspired by the other women that are 
also having their faces painted. So we're really inspired that they chose us. Mavis, Melina, Stevenson, Clark Best is my mum and she's done a lot of hard work in this borough and several other boroughs. As um, the mural reminds us, Auntie Mavis was involved in the Scrap Sauce campaign between 1977 and 1981. It was pivotal um, in the UK. Um, for the black community and all other ethnic communities um, in changing this law where people, where, where people were targeted just for being under suspicion of other crime. So the, the, no, no real hard evidence and the police were using it in a very racialized way to target our people. So yeah, pivotal. My grandmother was born in Jamaica and came over here to the UK to seek new horizons and a better life and she grabbed the opportunity with both hands and ran with it. She always used to say, nobody is better than you. And that's the motto that she lived her life by. So with that in her back pocket, she came here, did some menial jobs and decided, you know what, this is, this is not for me. I came for something different. And from there, her journey started. She went to Goldsmith College. She got into community groups. And whenever there was an injustice, it's almost like, she, you know, there was an itch that she had to scratch. She had to just keep going until that issue was dealt with. And she was not the kind of lady that you could say no to. So, you know, she was at the police station saying, let this young black boy go, what has he done? She was there supporting the parents. There was, you know, I remember stories of her phone being tapped because, you know, there was all these clandestine meetings of how to seek justice for the community. So she's always been a powerful woman and I think we all draw strength from that. She was an amazing, kind person. She not only ran her own race and did incredibly well, but poured into others and encouraged them and always spot where you've got this gift or you've got this talent and she would encourage you to do that. And she did that right up to the very end. One of the last things that she did in a countless list of things, she was a counsellor for the Ferry Award and you know, worked with, in different boroughs, different community groups. We've heard about y slip and all those things as well. But one of the last things she did was get a tree planted with a plaque in Charlton House for the slaves that were not acknowledged in the graves that were in the Greenwich Borough. And that was such a hard task for her to do. She came up against opposition. There was racism, no doubt, that she would have had to face in its many forms, both obvious and insidious. But she kept pushing and she got that tree planted and plaque done. And shortly after that, she kind of fell ill and wasn't the same. But she poured her all into that. So I think we're all proud of that legacy, all proud of what she's done. And it's in, it's in our veins. And sadly, even though the Scrap Sus campaign was there and there was supposed to be changes we all know that there's still work to be done despite those things and I can hear her whispering in my ear saying you guys take up the mantle and continue the work so I hope we'll be able to do that and do her justice and do her proud. Amen. Um, I am a resident of Lewisham over the last 20 years and I am also the founder and director of the Ella Roberta Foundation after my late daughter and a WHO a brief life ambassador. My campaign really started um, to do with the death of my late daughter. And I got into campaigning because we wanted to raise awareness amongst the British public what had happened to my daughter. And not just that, we also needed money um, to have a second inquest. So that was my first taste of campaigning, really, in 2016. It, it now seems like a, a, a long time away. Uh, but also what happened was, at the end of the inquest, we got air pollution on her death certificate and part of me felt, oh, you've achieved what you set out to do. But the coroner came up with a prevention of future death reports. And what that means is he had to give some recommendations. So what happened to her obviously wouldn't happen to other people in the future. And at that time, I think I got a little bit excited because there was going to be an environment bill or is now an act and the worst pollutant to human health PM 2.5 my hope was that the government obviously were going to include it in the environment act 
And when that didn't happen, that's when we decided to take action into our hands and Ella's law was drafted and it went through the Houses of Laws. As we speak, it is still in the Commons right now and it can become law tomorrow. Regarding the art, I kind of worked on it with, with Jenny because I thought, as much as they're painting me, um, I also wanted my daughter to be in the art and the, the bird represents her being the canary in the coal mine. But I think art should be provoking, it should ask questions. And I think Jelly's done a great job um, about that. Because I know some people are gonna go, why is that bread there? Or why is this and why is that? And that's what art should be. Art also should be provocative. I don't think it should be comfortable. And art should ask many questions. And I think a lot more people engage with, with art. I think artists, when given their own creative license, can put their own spin on things. So for example, an artist has their own style of doing a piece of work, creating their own artwork. And I think that they will be able to read with a fresh pair of eyes the stories of these women and then conceptualise what they'd like it to look like. But I know some of the artists actually spoke to the women and was able to incorporate what the women themselves also wanted to see in the murals. So I think it's really nice what you're doing it because then it's more like rooted in the lives of the people who we're representing but also through the artist lens as well. I never usually work at this scale so this is different from my usual style. Um, I, what's the same about it is the vibrancy and the colours and so forth, but working at this size has definitely taken me outside my comfort zone, but I've learnt a lot along the way and had great people from the community to engage with um, while doing it, which is different from a studio practice. So I've been painting Christina and Sade Elaine, who are twins that are phenomenal and have worked internationally and are gems of South East London. Um, so it's about kind of encouraging the aspiration of young people to achieve more um, and what better way to do that than to celebrate a mural of these cultural dance icons um, than me painting them. There's not many artists like myself that get uh, highlighted in this community. So I think it was uh, an opportunity for me to show maybe younger girls than myself, um, that we can also produce uh, artwork um, and just show a face to, I think sometimes we're just not represented in, in this field. Even when I was actually painting the work, uh, many people didn't associate me as the artist. And, and then, oh, did you? Like, they were so shocked to see that I was the one that painted it. So I think, yeah, for the three of us to really represent the heroes that we're painting and for us to be women of colour as well, um, I really think that was a, it was fitting for this area because it's not really shown. Roxanne has worked, has been part of Broccoli Max for a number of years and um, used to live in the area and I knew she did fantastic murals so she was an easy one. Um, and. Amanda, I remember going into New Spice one day, talking to Yvonne, the restaurant where the Elaine sisters is being painted, and said to her, oh, that's a lovely mural. In, you know, inside there was a painting, and who did that? And she explained. Um, and so I wanted to meet her. I contacted her and I said, you know, and this was way before we got the funding for the Untold Stories. And I just said, well, if we ever get anything, I'd love to work with you. Um, and then Jelly, I knew um, from her work, she, Jelly's very well known as a mural artist um, and she lives in East London because there, there aren't actually that many young female black mural artists, but they are there and it is just making that extra effort to ensure that, um, why not, you know, you get lots of mural artists are male and it's just really nice to have um, women and also really fantastic to have women of colour to actually paint those murals. I was with one of the artists earlier in the week just to kind of give them support and say, you know, tell them what a fantastic work they were doing. And she came back to me and said that um, many people were asking the other question, well, who is that? Who are you painting? Why are, they, why are you painting them? And I think that's a fantastic way to have discussion and communication about women who we wouldn't ordinarily know. And so we've got the um, 
the QR code on it, people can scan the code and find out in more detail who these women are. But I think it's really important that they are women that we wouldn't ordinarily know, but now you do, and now you can find out something more about the work that they've been doing and why they're on the mural. And then you can pass on the message, and you can pass on this message way beyond South East London. We're hoping that it has an impactful um, response to the younger generation. Um, I think it's really, for us, it's quite honoured that we're still growing, we're still on our journey, we've still got things that we want to achieve, but to be recognised right now, I think it's quite important. Mm -hmm. And I think it's quite important for younger people to see it and be like, wow, they're doing it and I feel like I can do it too. I definitely agree and I think you hit a beautiful point that there's no um, to get to, there's no point of I need to get here or a uh, platform, actually it's your continuing uh, striving in your passion and you continue running the race basically you're still in doing what feels right for you and to be recognized on the way is beautiful and yet there's more to come as people live in these areas and they're seeing all this kind of change from new buildings coming up maybe different types of communities coming in and flowing out having something that they can also identify with and bring a bit of vibrance to that's unexpected in a positive way um, I think it's great to, to add to the, the local community. Local history is really important and I think a lot of people underestimate the value of knowing whose footsteps we walk in literally in our local areas, like who came before us, who did, who laid the foundations for what we get to enjoy and what rights we get to enjoy today and I think that for not even just black women but for people in the local area of Broccoli to see and learn about what these women have done will inspire them in many different ways. I think for young black girls and women of all ages they'll be able to see these murals and think this is amazing like there was women in, the, in literally in my local area who did dance who campaigned for environmental justice who have actually created legacies that are going to outlive them and outlive us and I think for the local people who might not be black women they'll get to learn about the people who created the areas in which they live. What I would want and that I'm quite sure that this project will do is to provide legacy and longevity for the women specifically that have been included but provide inspiration for others to do their own things that recognize the people that they believe have made valuable contributions to our society so that's that's one of the main things that I can see that this project will do. Longevity, legacy.